Steve Cleveland now joins us on the Deseret First Credit <laughs> Union hotline. Steve, how you doing, brother? Doing good. You guys are all over the place this morning. We're yeah, we're generally uh, pretty pretty scattered. <laughs> if that's what you're talking about, uh, always good to come off of a win and went on on the on the road. BYU wins at San Francisco. What were some of your top takeaways from the Cougars' victory? You know what? Shooting 51 percent on the road is really good. And uh, when your shot selection is good, I just thought they were really disciplined in terms of what they did offensively, in terms of execution. I think the biggest statistic is probably the fact that they shot 15 or made 15 more free throws than USF did. 18 for 25, USF 3 for 8. We would expect that because USF shoots a lot of threes. But when you defend and get to the free throw line on the road, you got a chance to win. And always like to see your best players down the stretch make big baskets. I really, really like the point guard play of Hardnett. And I like him on the floor at the end of games. Uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Coach, we were talking just a few minutes ago that you look at the scenario that was playing out in that game, and, and we've seen BYU get into that scenario a lot in the last couple of years, and those are games that in years past BYU uh, probably lost that game. Do you, do you think that was a game that in years past BYU would have lost, and, and why do you think it was different last night? You know what, I do, I do believe a game like that where it was, you know, obviously six, seven minutes ago, the game's tied, it's going back and forth, San Francisco's made a run, and in the past, uh, the last couple of years, sometimes getting a meaningful stop would be uh, the Achilles heel, or maybe a shot selection issue, and or just inconsistent point guard play, not really having a point guard, and, and so all three of those things uh, I think were taken care of, that's the reason they won. But I think that if you look in the past in games like that, that, those are the three things that come to my mind as why they would lose that game or how they could lose that game. There was a big three. I think now it's uh, devolved to a big two of sorts as Yoli Childs and Elijah Bryan have asserted themselves as the clear top two on this team. Does BYU need a third person consistently there? And T.J. Haas seems like the biggest candidate, but maybe Josh Shear Hardnett slips into that, uh, that number three spot possibly. What do you think? I think in, in terms of winning games so far, it's probably been hard net, but absolutely they need TJ. And I think he's what gets them to the next level. He'll get out of his shooting slump, but, you know, who, who would have thought that uh, he, he would be shooting around 30% uh, from the field goal percentage and, and 33% from three-point during league play? That's just not his nature. And I think there's some adjustments. I think, obviously, the game is not being played at the pace. There's not a volume of shots and you have to kind of learn to play. But I, I think at the end of the day, if BYU is going to achieve their goals, it's going to be because TJ steps up and makes big baskets and big moments. Coach, I want to ask you about TJ Haas and Zach Selyus because these are guys that thrived in the kind of uh, run and gun that Terry Nashif and, and Dave Rose had going uh, you know, the last couple of years. Zach, an excellent catch-and-shoot guy. How do you see their roles in this offense, and do you see them evolving between now and the end of the year to where they're – they're more like what we've seen from them in the past. I think in terms of Zach, I, I don't know that that can be fixed during the season. I think Zach needs to spend the off season where he can create his own shot. Right now he's a pretty one-dimensional player. He plays hard, and he's a great team guy, and he's unselfish. He shares the ball. He's trying to execute defensively. He can be a liability at times depending on matchups. So his attitude's right where it needs to be. But for him to get to the next level, he's going to have to learn how to create his own shot off the dribble, one or two dribbles, pull-ups, those kinds of things. Uh, I, I think with TJ, uh, he, 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 has, he has the ability to do this. And I think there will be circumstances and situations. There are going to be a lot of games that are over uh, by halftime uh, as they play at home. Even some of these games on the, on the road, the bottom four, LMU, Pepperdine, Santa Clara, UOP, these are all teams that are really, really down. There's going to be some opportunities for TJ to be left on the floor by himself with the bench guys where he can get his, his confidence back. And I can see the coaching staff using that time to help him that way. Of the two teams, BYU obviously has only faced St. Mary's, between St. Mary's and Gonzaga. But even though BYU lost that game last Saturday to the Gales, how much do you think BYU has closed the gap between themselves and St. Mary's and Gonzaga? Well, they have closed the gap. You know, there's no question. Now, hey, you know, they split with <laughs> – you know, Gonzaga the last three years. So it hasn't been a problem for them winning on their, on their court. But in terms of overall play, in terms of them not getting beat by teams that we all think that they should beat, uh, I think they've come light years. And, and, and certainly that game at home against St. Mary's, they had every single opportunity to win that game. And unfortunately it didn't go their way. But I think they've made a they, – they've really closed the gap. 
And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Gonzaga BYU game, because BYU, so you start looking at BYU and their tempo and their pace. And but at the end of the game last year at Gonzaga, it was a offensive possession, one possession at a time. Eric Mika and others making big shots. So it's not like they haven't played that way to beat Gonzaga, but certainly BYU has closed the gap. Steve Cleveland is on BYU Sports Nation as we talk about the Cougars' win over San Francisco and the Cougars in league play. Now BYU is on to Pacific, one of the dreaded uh, P teams in the league that sometimes BYU struggled with. How better equipped is this team, in your opinion, to handle Pacific on the road than maybe previous years? Well, definitely much more prepared. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a, a UOP team that lost their best player, Ray Bowles, who, who transferred to Fresno State. They really, really miss him. Anthony Towns is still there. Nandi Okonkwo is still there. Uh, Jahil Tripp is a sophomore that stepped up. But they, they don't have the ability to score a lot of points. Now, at home, they're going to be better. It's going to always be tougher on the road to win a game like this. I see BYU winning this game, uh, and I just don't believe that UOP has the pieces and the talent to be competitive in this league, in the top half of this league right now. And uh, that's just kind of where it is. They're, they're down as a Santa Clara, Pepperdine, and LMU. What does it tell you? And granted, this covers two seasons. But BYU right now has won seven true road games in a row dating back to last year. What does that tell you about this team? Well, it, it, two or three things. One, that they are a confident group. They're confident in what they are doing. There, there is not any question. You come to the timeouts. You look at this team at timeouts. They're focused. They understand. They believe that they're playing the way that they have to to win games at the end. And guys want the ball. Guys want to get stops. So certainly, the the biggest difference is that there is a system in place that has really helped them to win on the road. We know you have to defend. You know you have to get to the free throw line. You know you have to take good shots. You know you have to get one, two, or three as as the coaching staff calls it kills. You get, when you can get two or three stops in a row, that's how you went on the road to quiet a crowd down. So they're doing all those things. They're four and zero on the road. They're seven and one away from Marriott Center. So it, 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 obviously they believe in what they're doing, and, and no better way to learn it. I mean, it's one thing to learn it at home in front of twenty thousand fans when everything's going your way, but when seven out of eight times you've been away from your building and you've won some close games on the road. Then, then that's how you get young men to believe in what you're doing. Steve, yesterday we discussed uh, a question that I don't know that there's a right answer to, but we thought it was an interesting conversation. What affects BYU's season more at this point? St. Zaga games, that is St. Mary's and Gonzaga, or the other games? Well, I, I would say this. I don't know if there is a, a clear answer to this other than I think this team is more prepared to play the team's that are at the bottom half of the league in terms of talent and experience and maybe just growing at this time and, and building programs. I think they're much more prepared to win those games. I still believe that if your goal is to win a championship and your goal is to get to the NC2A tournament, then St. Mary's and Gonzaga are the most important games on your schedule. Uh, this is a league, as I think Coach Rose mentioned uh, a week or so ago, you know, where he had won conference championships at, with 10 and 6 records. That's not going to happen in this league. You've got to win 15, 16 games to win this conference. So I think that those other games will take care of themselves. But for BYU to win the league or get to the NC2A tournament, you know, they, they need to win two or three out of those games in regular season. So I think those, if, if you're trying to achieve your goals, those games become the most important. Not taking anything away from losing to a team that you shouldn't. But at the end of the day, you've got to beat those people. and they, they lost an opportunity at home, and so that means they're going to have to get one on the road somewhere. Ultimately, I think right now, this, this league is not a two-bid league. Every, all the prognosticators, they're all saying, hey, it's probably a two-bid league. And probably most everybody from the outside looking in said, well, it's probably Gonzaga and St. Mary's again. But BYU still has, has a really a great opportunity, other than just winning that tournament, to put themselves in that conversation as well. And I think everybody knows in the league now. They're watching film. They know BYU is playing differently, and it's a whole it's a whole different element that that they're the way they're approaching the game. If there's a team coach that everybody in the league is probably really concerned with, it may be San Diego. The Toreros, nice start, playing really well, coming off a win last night on the road at Portland in overtime. Um, how concerning 
how it is what they're doing to say, you know, to BYU, to Gonzaga, and to St. Mary's? How much of a threat are they in this conference? Do you think? Well, I, I don't think they're. I don't think they'll be in the top three. I do believe they're capable of beating any of the top teams, uh, especially at home. They, they've done that to BYU in the past. But this team is better offensively, and again, they're kind of growing up. A lot of these players that have been in the program now have been in the program two or three years. And, and so, yes, USD is a threat, and that's going to be a tough win at USD. And BYU knows it, what it feels like to lose there, you know, when, when they felt like they had the better team. So USD has brought a different element. I, you know, I think San Francisco still is a team that uh, on a, any given night, they had an opportunity last night. I mean, you talked six or seven minutes ago, it's tied. And uh, BYU stepped up and, and, and basically won that game on making big plays and getting stops. But that tells you they're certainly capable. So both USF and USD are, are dangerous teams when they play at home, and that'll be a really, really difficult game for BYU when they go down there. Steve, we appreciate the time. We look forward to the game at Pacific, and uh, always love your insight. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. That's Steve Cleveland on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.